What's going on everybody? I'm Tim Metz and welcome to my channel. If you like these lessons, be sure to like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff that every YouTuber asks you to do ever. Anyway, today I have a huge announcement. Well, not so fast. So, this is where I was going to tell you that I partnered with Jorg Eckel to sell his book on my website. But unfortunately, due to some unforeseen circumstances, I was unable to make that happen. So you're just going to have to get it at Maxwell's Drum Shop, Columbus Percussion, or the Memphis Drum Shop. All right, now back to the video. Jorg spent over 10 years compiling and transcribing this book. It's got 372 pages of Philly Joe Jones goodness. I mean, can you imagine the work that it took to put this book together? Jorg, thank you for doing this. If you're a jazz drummer, somebody that's at all interested in jazz, you need to own this book. So to celebrate, I wanted to uh, show you guys how I use this book both in my teaching and also in my own personal practice. I wanted to make this special for you guys, so I've included some guided practice at the end of this lesson so that you guys can practice with me. So go get your drumsticks. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. We're waiting. Go get them. The first thing that you want to do is choose a solo to learn. There are 372 pages. 300, 372 pages of drum solos in this book. That could be overwhelming for just about anybody. So if you're a fan of Philly Joe, let your ears be your guide. You know, if you already know a whole bunch of solos that you maybe haven't ever transcribed or done anything with, find them, they're in this book. So find them, listen to them again, read along, and then start practicing. If you are new to Philly Joe Jones, a good thing to do would be to kind of flip through the book, see if there's a solo, maybe look for the short ones, uh, see if there's a solo that looks like you can play it, <laughs> and then start listening to it. For this lesson, I wanted to pick a solo that was short and easily recognizable and something that everybody should have pretty easy access to. And so, if you didn't recognize it, the solo that we're going to work on today is Philly Joe's intro to Locomotion on John Coltrane's Blue Train. So like I said earlier, the first step is, if you're not familiar with this solo, go listen to it. Listen to the entire song. Don't just listen to the solos, guys. Come on, drummers. You know who you are, whole song, not just the solos. So listen to the whole song a bunch of times. Get familiar with it, know the solos, know the people that are on the record. It's super important to do that. After that, we'll start reading along with the solo. So you read along with the solo, you start to recognize the notes, put the notes to the ear, you have a deeper knowledge of how it goes. Once you're ready to start playing, the next step is to break it into smaller chunks. The solo today is only eight measures long, so we're gonna divide it into basically every little phrase. So let's get over to the drum set and start working on it. I'll play the whole solo slow for you so that you can get a sense of what it sounds like slow. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so we'll, we'll tear this down just a little bit, about two measure increments, or really per phrase. So the first phrase is doubles, and they go, he moves the right hand around the toms. So. The next phrase is just some stick shots. One on the end of one, and then three. After that, we have a tom phrase. A question. An answer. And that's basically it for those first four measures. I mean, the next phrase starts on the end of four, of uh, the fourth bar, but that's not what we're gonna talk about in these first four measures. So we'll play just that much. And that's the first four bars. Now, 
The second four bars are based off of a paradiddle diddle. If you don't know the paradiddle diddle, this is what it is. Right, left, right, right, left, left. Don't forget that first accent. That really helps shape the sound of the paradiddle diddle, and it also helps with uh, the phrasing that Philly used on this particular, uh, I hate to say lick, but on this particular phrase. We'll call it a phrase. Uh, so the phrase is right, right, left, left, para, diddle, diddle, para. All right? So uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four uh, with the bass drum. Okay. So sometimes you have to adapt. If you're not very comfortable with paradiddle diddles, then uh, you can maybe use singles. But the way that I hear it, and I'm, I'm certainly the way that York heard it when he wrote it, was as this lick that, that uh, Philly used to play, which was kind of some doubles and then paradiddle diddles. So doubles, ba ba da da, and that sets him up for the paradiddle diddles after that. So you're probably going to want to practice this particular phrase. Start slow. Treat it like a rudiment. Kind of go slow to fast. Add it to a um, add a metronome to it if you want to, uh, but just treat it like a rudiment. Once you're comfortable with it and you can play it without having to think too much about it, then that's when it'll be really easy to play this solo. Uh, so next he plays basically the same phrase on the tom and a very similar phrase with two extra pair of diddle diddles on the floor tom. I'll start uh, on the snare, play that phrase, take a pause, play the phrase that goes on the tom, take a pause, and then play the phrase on the floor tom. Here we go. We put it all together. Now let's put both four bars together and let's see if we can play the whole solo. One, two, three, four. there it is. You just played a Philly Joe transcription. Now, uh, the, the idea, the goal is to be able to play it like Philly Joe. So if you can speed it up, get it to the point where you're playing it with Philly uh, on the recording, then you've, you get an A, right? So that's, that's perfect. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Now, if you aren't technically able to do that, that's fine too. What you want to do is just learn the phrasing. Take the ideas that Philly played and then start applying them to yourself. I mean, just this first phrase by itself. I mean, that's a really cool phrase. You can, you sh if you know double stroke rolls, you should be able to play that one, no problem. So you can play that at any tempo. So there you go. That's one part of a solo that you could always use in your own bag of tricks. All right, let's get to that practicing. All right, everybody, we're going to start out at 100 beats per minute. Uh, the metronome is set to two and four, and here we go. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
Okay, you made it. That was, uh, that was the whole solo at 100 beats per minute. Now let's speed it up to 150. All right, now let's do 200. We're starting to get up there.
my goodness, my timer is beeping. All right, that's it. You're on your way. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya!